What's happening team? Today I'm doing something a little different, editing your images. So I reached out to some fellow Instagrammers to ask if they'd send over some of their banger portfolio shots for me to tinker with. They said yes, play tape. So before we begin, it's worth mentioning that editing images is very subjective and personal to your creative eye. There is no right or wrong way of doing things as long as it makes sense to you and makes you happy. How I edit these images is just my interpretation and it might be completely different to how the photographer imagined it, but hopefully they'll like what I do, so let's dive in. Here's an image sent in by Johnny Evans, a beautiful moody gothic church scene with some lovely reflections. So we'll start with a bump in the exposure by 0.4 of a stop, but compensate the brightness in the sky with the highlight slider by around minus 20. Shadows will sit around minus 30, and let's add some contrast with the white slider. A fair amount of clarity, but counteract that grungy texture that the clarity slider gives you. Now onto the color. Let's go for the Adobe Landscape Profile, and then we'll boost the vibrance. Next on the HSL sliders, starting with saturation, we'll take out the reds and focus on those gorgeous autumn oranges. Yellows through to the blues will reduce down and take out the purples and magentas completely. On the luminance tab, I'll darken those leaves in the foreground, but brighten the leaves on the big round tree. I'll add some contrast to the darker greens, and I don't think the other sliders will have much effect. Finally, onto the hue tab, I'm just gonna enhance those autumnal colors and give those ferns a boost behind the church. And again, not too much going on with the purples or magentas. So let's just see our progress so far. And that's got some nice punch in those colors now. I might just reduce the Kelvin by a few hundred to add some coldness to the scene. Now for some gradients. I'll just drag from the bottom corner and bring out those details with the whites and the dehaze slider. Now for the sky, using a radial filter, bring the highlights all the way down, and again, bump the dehaze slider to around 30. Now to add some focus to that fabulous Gothic church. Another radial filter, but this time reduce the dehaze slider. When you're dealing with water and reflections, don't forget to repeat the changes that you make above. So I think the wall here would benefit from an exposure increase by around a stop. And I think this is ready for Photoshop. And we could probably just leave the image there, but I want to bring some detail and focus to the church and do some subtle color grading. So let's begin with some dodge and burn. Using a curves layer, drag up the curve and then invert the mask with Control or Command I. And with a soft edge white brush, flow to around 5%, we'll begin some light painting. This church wall and the fence here and the grass. And let's give some texture to that tree as well. And I think the bell tower looks a bit dark too. Also remembering to apply the changes to the reflection. Now onto some burning. Create a new curves adjustment layer and drag down the curve. Using the same technique as before, I'm going to define the shape of the church. and also darken the trees in front here to create separation. Then with a levels adjustment layer, just crush those blacks ever so slightly. Now for some color grading using the color balance adjustment layer. Introduce some cyans and blues into those shadows. Now a small artistic change that I'm gonna make is adding a hint of mist to those trees in the distance. Using a soft white brush, just dab a few times and then change the blending option to soft light. And once again, do the same for the reflection too. So this looks a little bit weird, so I'll just get rid of that. Now I'll define the clouds even more using Blend If. I have a dedicated video covering Blend If, so I'll pop a link in the description below. And one last change on the burn layer. I'll define the roof a touch. And this looks like a wrap. 
So a big thanks to Johnny Evans for sending in this beautiful composition. Check out his Instagram account over at Shoot for the Surf for more epic landscapes. Next up, we have some city street photography from Alex One Photography. So let's see how we go from a raw image to a bleak, futuristic vibe using some complementary colors and a spot of Photoshop. I'll start by lifting the exposure by about half a stop. Highlights and shadows can come up quite a bit. Clarity and texture opposing each other at plus and minus 30. A hint of dehaze and contrasts can really make this image pop. Next onto the HSL sliders. I'll just change the hue of the Coca-Cola sign and really push the saturation too. I'll leave the oranges where they are for the skin tones but get rid of everything else. Luminance I'll just darken the reds also. Now using the Adobe Color website, we can see that the complementary color to red is this green. So I'm simply going to add some green back into those shadows using the color grading wheels. Now let's darken the exposure of the sky with a gradient filter. And finally just straighten the image ever so slightly. So heading into Photoshop, I'll make a copy of the background layer and I want to address the vehicles in the image. Now, looking at Alex's Instagram feed, he is partial to some photoshopping techniques himself, so I don't think he'll mind me experimenting just a bit. I'm gonna blur the copied background layer using motion blur. Set the distance to about 250 and the angle the way the traffic is moving. Then add an inverted mask by holding the Alt key and clicking mask. Then with a white brush, because white reveals, just bring back those moving vehicles. So I'll just tidy up this edge here and include the reflection as well. Now for some dodging again using a curves layer. Invert the mask with command I and with a white brush and a low flow, begin light painting the walker to give him some definition. And I'll brighten these reflections as well. And that's looking better. Now for some burning. Doing the reverse with the curve, invert the mask and create a vignette effect. So one more dodge curves adjustment layer to target these shoes. So that's great. The green is looking a little strong. So I'm gonna make a vibrance adjustment layer reduce down the saturation, and then simply copy the painted mask by holding the Alt key and dragging the mask onto the vibrance layer. Now the desaturation only applies to the shoe area. So let's tidy up the layers for neatness. Next up, I'm gonna create a new layer and with the pen tool, path the area behind Piccadilly Circus. Turn this into a selection and with a big soft white brush, just tap once and bring the opacity down to create some depth in the image. And I'll do the same over this side too. So now for a rain effect overlay. Now overlays are widely available on the web. Some are free and others paid. This one came free with Affinity Photo, which we'll discuss later on in the video. So just drag it into the image and then resize it to fit. Then simply change the blending option to screen. And we could leave it there, but I think we can improve this. So head back into Motion Blur once again and change the angle to vertical. And that's just added some movement to complement the traffic. Now I'm gonna add a levels adjustment layer and clip it to the rain layer so it only affects this layer. And then enhance the whites in the rain. And I think I'll add a mask to the rain to just remove some of the heavier water droplets from the walker. And same as the previous image, I'll crush those blacks using a levels adjustment layer. One final change I'm gonna make is enlarging the canvas size. Then with a rectangular marquee tool, select up to where his leg starts, and then pressing Command T for the free transform tool, just stretch that portion of the image to give the composition a bit more breathing room. Then a few more tweaks with the vibrance and clarity completes the edit. 
So a big thanks to Alex One Photography for sending in this beautiful street scene. Uh, check him out on Instagram, I'll pop a link in the description below. So next up is an amazing action football image from Andy Pelling Photography, which we're going to convert into a classic black and white image. So if we engage the black and white tab in Lightroom, this doesn't really make for a great black and white image based on the luminance values of the original colours. So let's see if we can improve things by increasing the whites and bring some clarity. Already things are starting to look better, but there's lots more to do. Now onto the mix sliders. I'll bring down the reds and increase the skin tones. Brighten the grass with the yellows and the green slider. The blue targets the keeper's jersey, which gives some really nice separation between the two players of interest. And the purples and magentas, no real change there. Now I just want to show you what can happen if you push these sliders a bit too far. You're looking for artifacts when playing around with colour adjustments. So you can see some pretty nasty haloing effect here which we don't want so just be mindful of this when you're playing with these sliders. So if we turn on the highlight warning we can see we're just clipping those whites a touch so find the slider which has gone too far and just bring it back in and that's perfect. Now for some gradient filters to bring focus onto the two main players in the image. Reducing down the exposure and I think that looks ready for Photoshop. So starting with my regular dodging techniques for enhancing the highlight areas. The legs and cheekbones. So a nice low flow will give you the best results when you use it with a graphics tablet. Now for some burning, but this time I'm gonna go for an S curve to keep the falling rain droplets nice and bright. So I think we can push the curve a little further. So one final touch using the levels adjustment layer to bring the black point to meet the start of the histogram. And I think that completes this black and white conversion. So some stellar work from Andy Pelling Photography. Check him out on Instagram, he's all about the action football shots. So one final image sent in by Ian Butler. A cracking portrait of a great face in midday sunshine. And when he sent this over, he also mentioned the glaring hotspot on the gentleman's forehead, which can't really be fixed using the highlight slider on its own. So let's just do some basic adjustments to the highlights and shadows and send it across to my favorite program for dealing with skin called Affinity Photo. Now using a process called frequency separation, which you can do in Photoshop, but it's a bit of a long-winded process and you have to create actions. But Affinity Photo has a dedicated tool which is super intuitive and easy to understand. The high and low frequencies get separated into two separate layers, meaning the detail from the tone and colors. Using the radius slider, you want to aim for when the detail begins to disappear from the right side, which is the low frequency side. And on this image, about five pixels should do it. Now you can see it's created two separate layers. Choose the low frequency layer, and with the healing brush tool, hardness all the way down to 0%, and using the Alt key, we can sample an area of good skin, and then you can begin eliminating the hotspot. Now swap to the high frequency, and simply change the hardness back to 100% and sample a clean area of skin texture and then restore the area that was lost. And now we can export this to a Photoshop file. So now we have the file open in Photoshop with the layers intact, we can stamp down those layers into one layer with Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. And then we'll just dump the frequency layers. Then my obligatory dodging process to brighten the features of his face. And the eyes. And then teeth here. And now for my burning process to target his hand 
to match the color of his face. Next up is some color grading using a gradient map. And I'm gonna choose this gold gradient and then change the blending option to overlay and then reduce the opacity to around 25%. Now we're beginning to get this Mediterranean warmth, which we can enhance using a selective color balance adjustment layer, adding some complementary cyans to the highlights and reds to the darkest parts of the image. Next, I'm gonna stamp the image down to one layer with Control, Alt, Shift and E and then rename it to Zoom Blur. So what I'm gonna do here is create separation and a sense of forward movement using a gentle radial filter. Head up to Filter, Blur, and Radial Filter. Then making sure Zoom is checked, I'll try an amount of 7%, and I think this looks a little strong, so I'll try 5%. Yeah, that's more subtle. I'll add a mask to the blur layer and with a black brush, just bring back the subject matter. So that's looking pretty good. I'll create one more stamped layer with Control, Alt, Shift and E, and then convert it to a smart object. Then head up to Camera Raw Filter. The blues will benefit from a cyan hue. I'll brighten the skin tones a touch, Clarity up and texture down. Using the brush tool, I'm gonna to select the beard to increase the shadows and whites. And I think a global exposure reduction is needed. And now for some vignette style gradients to bring attention to the center of the image. Now the beauty of turning a layer into a smart object is that you can return back to the previous state, which in this case was camera raw filter, and make changes to anything that you think looks wrong. I'll head back into camera raw and target the beard once again and bring some contrast and reduce down the saturation to accentuate the whites. Perfect. And a slight crop because I think there's a little too much space above his head. And one final change will be painting some orange into the shadows. And then I'll change the blending option to soft light. Which just levels out the composition. So now we have a really warm portrait dealing with some harsh conditions from overhead sunshine, a lovely capture by Ian Butler. Check out his cracking landscape and portrait work here. That's your lot folks, hit that like button, that would really help the channel out, and don't forget to subscribe, there's plenty more videos on the way. I think my nib ran out.